know and I know that drugs and alcohol don't mix with driving. Street feet. And maybe you didn't know that driving when you're angry or uptight can be just as lethal. Street feet. A lot of people are being killed in this country because of it, because of, you know, like lack of concentration or because of, you know, the drunk driving thing. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who are dying are under 25, between 18 and 25. And let's face it, that's the uh, people that, you know, buy my records and people that come and see my shows. Why do we need a campaign like Street Beat? Well, over 1,000 young road users aged between 16 and 25 are killed in road crashes each year. Of those killed, 80% are male. And most of the accidents involve a carload of young people driving home late at night after a night on the town. So how much influence do you think you'll have? I'll probably get more influence than, say, Bob Hawke or, or someone like that because, you know, mainly because, you know, like, Let's face it, Bob, you know, he's a cool guy and all that, you know, but he's, you know, he's a figure, you know, like, of authority, you know, whereas I'm something that the people relate to, you know, I'm a, you know, a bit of a mug layer, you know, one of the lads, you know. Oh, he's a working class man. How do you think parents are going to relate to the fact that their kids are listening to someone like you? You mentioned Bob Hawke before. they just got to encourage the kids, you know, yes, please go out and drive, but, you know, just, you know, just think about it while you're doing it. And they should do the same too, you know? Like, I'm sure a lot of parents aren't, aren't the sort of, the, the great drivers that they think they are, you know? You've got to realise your faults and be careful, you know? You have a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a drinker. Yeah. And enjoying a drink. Of course. Do you think perhaps this may be a bit contradictory? No, because uh, I never drink and drive, you know? Uh, I don't even, you know, let you know, my friends drink and drive. I wouldn't get in a car with, you know, somebody who's drunk. Would you stop drinking for something like this? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't stop drinking because of this, uh, you know, but this, this campaign isn't just about drinking or drugs. It's, like I said, it's about general awareness when you're driving. You know, it's about tailgating people and it's about cutting people off. It's about, you know, overtaking in the wrong places, you know. Drinking and driving is just one of the things. I don't drink and drive, you know. So if, if I did drink and drive and I came and stopped for this cause and then went and done it again, I'd be hypocritical, but I don't ever do it. So if you're not cool when you drive, pull over and take a few deep breaths to get your head together. I remember when I was 16 in Adelaide, you can get your licence when you're 16. And, uh, you know, I never, ever thought, you know, that I could get hurt in a car accident, you know. Um, I had a car, my first car didn't have any brakes or something, you know. I was driving around without brakes, it was ridiculous, you know. You know, I was very lucky that, I, you know, nothing happened to me, but, uh, Unfortunately, there's a lot of people, things do you know, happen to and They do get hurt or they kill someone else or they're you know, crippled or something. Does it surprise you that you have so much power? Uh, the power to influence, I mean. I don't know if I have or not. I'm just here, you know, to hopefully I can make, you know, if I influence one person, that's one person the difference. You know? Street Beat! Join Street Beat. I'm sure as hell beats being up statistics. Street Beat! Jimmy Barnes, the Ocker Springs. I am, um, you know, I'd really love to be here. You know how much I love the awards. But unfortunately, I'm on tour with ZZ right now in America, and I can't, so uh, I'll see you in May. If I don't see you in May, I'll move next door to you. That'll really bring your rent down. Thanks, Jimmy. People's attitudes have changed about Australian bands. Yes, I think uh, somebody was asking me a while ago whether I thought the uh, influx of overseas bands was damaging us, but I thought, uh, really, it's, it's really made people uh, aware of how good Australian bands are, too. Yeah. Because Australian bands can hold their own, if not, you know, mm. tackle any of the, the, the best bands overseas. And uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, you know, there's, you know, it's just something that people should see that, you know, that Australian bands are that good, and there's that many of them in one bill, you know. Has there been any problems over billing? No, no. That, that idea is, and we've got mental starting up, instead of this thing of people vaguely knowing who's there, you know, who's on. Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> Uh, you know, some people hopefully will be there early and they'll witness the whole thing. So that was the other thing we were trying to do too, was that, uh, you know, normally when you go to a show, it's sort of, oh, when we get in and see the, the warm-up act, who is it, in fact, you know? Yeah. Whereas we're trying to, you know, like, the mentals are on first, and that's, you know, like a major band or a, a great live band, and people have to be there early, you know? The only thing I guess I'm frightened about the whole event is that uh, they're planning to jet all the musicians in one plane around the street. Now, imagine if that plane actually went to the stores next week, retails are in. Uh, kicking off in Hobart shortly. Hi to Tassie. Hi to Catman. Hi to all of you. Gigi in the dancing machine. How are ya? Good. I'm still not a particularly good driver. Uh, 
I went, my uh, stepfather actually you know, gave me lessons and things like that. I wasn't very good at it. And when I went for my license, I actually failed twice. And I think they only gave it to me out of sympathy in the end, between two cars. Right with all the guys, you know, we were all in the car and the brakes started going. So what we had to do was every time we'd stop, we'd, you know, I'd slow down with the gears and they'd jump out and stop the car. But I dropped them all off first and then went home. And then I pulled up the driveway and I remembered I had no brakes and my dad's car was there, so I smashed into a tree. Sure, but I'm not sure anybody would want mine. <laughs> Why not? Uh, yeah, well, probably when I die, they're going to have to get out and beat my liver to death with a stick about three weeks later, you know? <laughs> about, being, about your body being chopped up a bit once you were dead. <sighs> Don't say that. Uh, no, no, I suppose not, yeah. It sounds horrible, but uh, if it actually helped, you know, save someone else, why not? I'm not going to use them. Like, uh, they gave me about a minute's lesson in knived in at about 30 feet of water on the barrier reef. It's pretty stupid, but, you know. But I never, you know, luckily I, I didn't, you know, have any problems, so... But I suppose I could have died quite easily. Have and I've, I've raced my horse against trains for bloody film clips. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty crazy. If you know my horse, he's nuts.